Okay, injury report. Uh, JD, Jadavion Clowney is in the concussion protocol. Uh, John Johnson has a thigh contusion. You know, like I talked to you guys about last night, uh, really proud of the effort, proud of the guys to fight versus a really good football team, division opponent, uh, you know, night game, all those things. Just was a really, really hard fought, uh, solid team win uh, that we set out to, to go achieve. So uh, proud of the effort. And then we got to get to uh, get to know the Saints this week, a, a team that we really haven't played uh, since I've been here. Um, so we really got to do our homework and understand our opponent coming in next week. That's where our focus goes. But I will take any questions you guys have. Thank you, Coach. We'll start with Mary Kay Cabot. Uh, yes, Kevin, just wondering, um, why is Deshaun so well suited to, you know, the no huddle? How much leeway are you giving him in terms of you know, what he can do when he's out there. And are you just really starting to imagine all the possibilities of all the things that uh, that this player can do for you? Yeah, you know, I think Deshaun certainly is getting more and more comfortable. Mary Kay and what we're doing, uh, we, we did do some no huddle. in uh, this last game, we did some no huddle down in Cincinnati. It's been part of who we've been this season. Uh, back when we played Baltimore in the first game, we did some no huddle with Jacoby. So it's certainly uh, part of our system. And I think it's really game by game, uh, the matchups, the certain things you're trying to do dictate how often and if you get into it at all. So uh, this week you could be in no huddle the whole game. You may not get into it at all, really just depending on what you're expecting from your opponent. And when he talks about, you know, hey, I can do the kinds of things that Patrick can do. Let me have a chance to do the no lookers and and all that stuff. Are, are you, you know, how excited are you uh, that he can do that kind of stuff? Yeah, I, you know, I, I see it in practice, Mary Kay. So I, I certainly know what uh, Deshaun is, is capable of. Uh, and, and he sees it really, really well. He had some plays in, in the game yesterday, uh, you know, one in particular that I'm thinking about where he has an uncanny ability to, to make some throws in tight, tough windows. So uh, it's definitely a part of his game and a part of that our game that will continue to grow. Thanks, Mary Kay. Scott Patrick is next. Hey, Kevin, I was wondering the run game. Um, when you went back and watched it, why were you able to have um, good success against a really tough run defense? Yeah, they are really tough, uh, Scott. I think they were maybe six going into it. Um, they have they have a very good scheme, and they got very good players. They're, they're stout up front. They got good edge players. The two linebackers are very, very instinctive and fast safeties that can fill. So we knew it was going to be a challenge. Uh, we tried to get into some advantageous looks for us. Uh, throughout the game and then really in the second half I'm really just proud of the guys I think we possessed the ball over 11 minutes in the fourth quarter and I know it didn't have a ton of points to show for it but kept the ball away from them grinded it out uh, when we needed to like what were the week before in Cincinnati obviously wasn't as good so what did you think you guys did better yeah it's all you know it's it, it's complicated. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a bunch of different things. I'd start with myself and, and us as coaches, making sure we give these guys a plan that, that they can execute, asking them to do things that they can do. Uh, and then I thought, again, the individual effort was outstanding. The offensive line was really, really good, uh, you know, in the run game and in the protection. I thought they protected very, very well uh, yesterday. But you, you win some one-on-one -on -one matchups up front, and that's when Nick and Kareem can get going. Uh, making one guy miss, and then and they can be big plays. Thank you, Scott. Cam Justice, go ahead. Hey, Kevin. With Deshaun a few games in now, for you and, like, the other coaches, what would you say the most crucial parts of his game are that when you're watching him develop and get used to this offense that you're looking to see grow? Yeah, I, I think like, that's another good question, and I think it's a lot of things. Uh, simple operation things and in and out of the huddle and and getting into the right looks and uh for for Deshaun or really all the players but just there's a comfort level that comes with game reps and there's certain situations that come up uh in games that you uh that you cover a lot in practice we've covered a lot of situations and then sometimes situations come up in games that are unique uh, and it gives you an opportunity to cover them in the moment and then this morning sitting down and watching the tape with all the quarterbacks I, we can go through all those moments and then take our time and talk through them. So I think uh, for Deshaun in particular, but for all our guys, but for Deshaun, uh, getting into these game reps, getting into these situations and, and understanding why we're calling things and, and how we're trying to attack the defense. He talked last night too about 
having the game coming back to him and particularly getting some swagger back. I know he's more of a quiet guy, but are you seeing that in maybe his demeanor as a leader too, as the weeks go by? Yeah. I, I, you know, he doesn't lack for confidence and, and, and he's a great leader in the building, outside the building on, on the practice field, in the locker room. So uh, I do think there's certainly confidence that comes from playing and playing and, and, and winning and those type of things uh, that always uh, leads to confidence. Thank you, Cam. Jeff Shadell, you have our next question. Hey, Kevin, we talked to Joe Woods on, uh, I think it was Wednesday. He talked about simplifying the defense so the guys could play fast. Did that happen? And and how how do you condense that uh, defensive game plan? Yeah, you know, it's always a unique game plan when you're playing Baltimore. They have a, a varied attack. Uh, as you know, they can get big. They they have the quarterback run game that you have to concern yourself with. So you're always trying to play simple, but give your guys answers, give your guys some some different movements or what it, what it may be to try to stop, slow down that run. So uh, at times we did it, at times they got us and, and, you know, they had some good plays. They had some good schemes. Uh, at the end of the day, we made enough plays in, in some critical moments uh, but we're going to continue to try to put together a plan that gives our guys a chance to play fast. So really three of the last four games, especially maybe Cincinnati, not as much, but the defense has really played well. What do you think has been the the difference? Yeah. You know, I, I can kind of just think about yesterday. I mean, guys play, we made plays. I think that's, it's always a, a game where, where you got to make some plays. And I think, you know, Denzel making a big interception, John Johnson having a big force fumble. Uh, uh, you know, we've alluded to takeaways, how important they are, because it does cover you up. You, can, you may give up some plays uh, in the course of a drive, but when you take it away, that ultimately is what you're looking to do. Thank you, Jeff. Mary Kay, back to you. Uh, yeah, just um, in, in looking at JJ3's game, it, it looked to me like that was kind of, I would think maybe his best game of the season, just wondering if you sort of saw it that way. And also, um, you know, in the past, he's done so many different things, played so many different roles. Do you think there's more to JJ three that, that meets the eye? And then as you guys go forward, can you pull more out of him? Yeah, I can't think it's hard for me to compare to the rest of the season, but speaking of yesterday, he, he was all over the field, you know, he's our green dot. So he makes the calls in that huddle. So when he's not out there, obviously there's a transition uh, that has to take place, but, you know, I think he was around the ball. I thought he tackled well. Uh, he's the type of guy, he does have versatility where we do can play him down low. We can play him in the post. He can play half field. So he does kind of show up and then, you know, he's played really well for us on our punt team as well. And Jadavian, I mean, Jadavian was having a great game. I thought too. Um, so if you have to be with Jadavian for, uh, you know, the next game or whatever the case may be, uh, what are you losing if he's not out there? Yeah, you know, we've talked about J.D. Uh, a lot, just about his length, his uh, disruption uh, certainly has been productive for us in the run of the past. So, guys, if we are without him, and as you know, with concussions, it's hard to predict. Uh, but if you are without him, you need guys to step up. I thought Alex Wright had some really good moments in this game, Chase Winovich as well. So guys will have to step up if we're without. Him. Thank you, Mary Kay. Scott Patrick, you're up again. Kevin, you referenced it with getting the takeovers or the takeaways at the end of, you know, to stop some of those drives that they were having. Um, but like, is there a good lesson there for the guys that, hey, you can give up almost 200 yards rushing, but if you make the right plays at the right time, you can still win games? Yeah, I, I do think there's – it's why we put so much emphasis on turnover margin and how we take care of the ball. I mean, zero giveaways versus that deep defense and that team is, is a big deal. And then taking it away versus that team is, is a very big deal. So it's definitely something you, you emphasize in, in the course of emphasizing, you don't say, Hey, let's give up a, a bunch of yards. Uh, but there is an element as we all know, and, and you watch football on, on, you can watch it today on Sunday, but there is bend, but don't break. That does happen uh, on, on defense at times. And when you make a big play on, on a third down or a fourth down, uh, when you make a big play on first and 10, like J.J. did to knock the ball out, those those are changing the course of the games when you talk about turning the ball over. Thanks. Thank you, Scott. Tony Grossi, you're up. Um, Kevin, uh, concerning uh, Cade York, um, vast majority of his misses are here in your stadium. But when you see Chuck and Tucker miss two field goals, does it kind of substantiate that this is one of the toughest venues to kick in? 
Yeah, well, I, I do think there's an element to that, Tony, for sure. You know, our stadium being on the lake, you're going to deal with the elements. You're going to deal with the cold. You're going to deal with the cold this week as, as you look at the forecast. Uh, it's certainly the wind picks up. I don't think the wind was a, a real big factor yesterday, but that, that's part of the elements that really both teams have to deal with. So I think the, 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 there's not an advantage or disadvantage in that since both teams have to deal with that. And do you feel like when you, when you talked about Watson and that game one needing to get through that game one, do you have the same opinion that Cade York needs to get through his first season at that stadium? I, I wouldn't go, I wouldn't characterize it that way, Tony. I think rookies in general, <laughs> you know, you got to get through year one, you got to survive year one and, and break through that rookie wall and all those type of things. But uh, I don't see it that way. He's, he's a kid that continues to work at his craft um, and that's what he'll do this week as well. We'll take one more, Tom Withers. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Kevin. Hey, that tight window you mentioned before with Deshaun, was that that out to, to uh, Donovan down the sideline? It was not. It was not. Okay. Nice try. Can you tell me which one it was? Yeah, it was the throw he threw uh, that somehow got by uh, their nickel, number 14's uh, arms and shoulder. Gotcha. Hey, I know you don't want to take a macro look at everything yet, but do you really have to compartmentalize this season into before Deshaun and after Deshaun when you incest the entirety of your team? Yeah, honestly, Tom, I, I'm so week to week. It's hard for me to, to think that way. Uh, I understand the question, uh, but for me, so the focus really does go so much into week to week because as I know you guys know, it's just, it's, it's hard to win in this league. It's, it's uh, you get some really tough matchups. You play some really good teams, some well-coached teams. So it's, you really, once you get through Baltimore, you kind of look at the schedule and look, okay, we got another good team coming here. I know they got good coaches. So that's really where my focus is.